Hello, I'm David Dye, and I'd like to read you a story that I wrote. It's called Beneath the Reading Tree. It was illustrated by Jonathan Dye, my son. Here we go. Lisa loved to read beneath her grandma's tree. She would find a shady space and rest a book upon her knee. Big books, little books, books with pictures on every page, mom and dad books with no pictures at all, and books for children of every age. Lisa loved to look at anything from off the shelf, but her favorite kind of books were the ones she could read herself. Big words, little words, words that jingled with a little rhyme, and words that just sat there patiently and let her look at them for a long, long time. Lisa loved to read beneath the reading tree. She thought it was a magic place that made her feel smart and full of glee. So when her mother said she had to leave her favorite spot, her stomach started to feel like a book with jumbled up words and her tiny face got hot. Summertime is over, and the weather is starting to cool. You may visit your grandma on the weekends, but now it's time for school. Back to her city, back to her street, back to her big brick home, back to her big old bedroom where she had to play alone. Lisa loved to read beneath the summer sun, but vacation time was over, and she had to say goodbye to all the summer fun. Tomorrow would be her first day at Cabinus Elementary, and she felt like a blank page in a dictionary without a single entry. Could she read it all without the tree's magic leaves? Would she know her letters and sounds or remember her ABCs? Don't worry, dear, her daddy said as he sat her on his lap. Reading comes from inside your heart and not from magic sap. Lisa loved to read beneath her reading tree, but now she was at the school, feeling like a book without a cover and nowhere to flee. She went into the school, down the hall, and found her new classroom, into a place crowded with excited kids, but her heart was still full of gloom. Big kids, little kids, kids with freckles and funny looks, but all of them had one thing in common. They were all reading books. Her teacher, Mrs. Jenkins, said hello with a beautiful smile and led her through the busy room to a special reading aisle. Lisa looked around, and to her wonder and surprise, she saw a familiar sight and could not believe her eyes. Her face was glowing, and her smile began to bloom for a big, brown paper tree stood tall in the corner of the room. Big branches, little branches, branches like a scarecrow's crooked arm, branches that looked just like the ones back on her grandma's farm. The magic filled the air as Lisa found her nook and sat beneath a leafy wreath and opened up a book. She spent the day her favorite way, with a book against her knee, a smile on her face, and her confidence in place. Beneath her new reading tree. So, can you think of a favorite spot you love to cuddle up with a book and read? Why don't you go find that place right now and enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time, this is Mr. Die signing off.